The male holds on with hooks on his flippers. Unsuccessful suitors try to dislodge him. The couple may remain together all day surfacing every 10 minutes or so for a breath. The sandstorms have eased and the islands welcome turns. Crested turns are courting. they reach up to appear taller, more attractive. Compared to the cormorants, these are dressy dancers. A small gift between white-cheeked turns seals their union. The air is full of the coming and going of these most graceful birds. As the sand heats to 60 degrees, the terns need to do more than just shade the egg, and they're overheating themselves. Luckily, they have a trick. When the tern colony overheats, one of the parents goes skimming over the water, drinking and wetting their breast feathers. The damp feathers hold just enough moisture for evaporation to cool the egg. Very few other birds have learned this trick. Each of the Gulf's characters face domestic life in their own way. A little goby lives in a burrow. He has a battle with the sand. Every day, his home needs spring cleaning. Another goby, and another strategy. A shrimp dug his burrow, and still lives here, cleaning out the sand. The shrimp has poor eyesight and relies on the goby as a guard. There's a tenderness between this odd couple. The shrimp always has a tentacle touching the goby, and the goby warns the shrimp with flicks of his fins. A Sohal surgeon fish passes. The goby pushes the shrimp down the burrow. The hard-working housekeeper rarely goes out. Instead, it removes dirt and small visitors and parasites by eating them. The Gulf's characters may be less colorful than the Red Seas, but are no less wonderful. Around the Gulf, the seawater gets hotter through the summer. Corals generally bleach and die if sea temperatures rise even a little. 
The Gulf is about the hottest sea in the world, and corals here, like Acropora, are specially adapted and work with different algae. With sea temperatures expected to rise everywhere, some scientists think that the magical Gulf corals could be the salvation of the world's reefs. By August in the Gulf, the tern chicks are adult size in mottled adolescent plumage. Their parents are trying to feed them for their journey home. As the sun falls, tracks in the sand lead to one of our green turtles. She'll dig a nest about a meter deep and lay about a hundred eggs. Over her lifetime, she'll lay several thousand. The chances are very few will survive. The riches of the Gulf are hidden under sand and water and dust. The natural wealth buried here that has most changed us is oil. The stakes here for wildlife and for us are very high. Oil tankers go around Arabia to the Red Sea, heading for the Suez Canal and Europe. The Red Sea reefs sit vulnerable beside one of the busiest shipping channels in the world. Below, cas Below casualties. A century-old wreck sits harmlessly at 20 fathoms. This was a cargo steamer en route through the Suez Canal. Now, it's part of the reef. The Red Sea and the Mediterranean were linked by the Suez Canal almost a century and a half ago. The wreck has been colonized by eggs and larvae from the reef. Leather corals reach out from below decks. Coral grouper and glassfish are in adjacent cabins. A red-mouthed grouper acts as a protector to the glassfish, guarding them from other groupers or jacks. But the babysitter snatches a few glassfish for himself, the price of his protection. In order to colonize a wreck or regenerate the reef, Eggs and young must survive. Staying alive yourself is hard enough. Starting a family here, securing a future, is an extraordinary story. Love has reached the Red Sea Reef. Bannerfish take turns on the dance floor. Couples are preparing for a family. Fish time their spawnings carefully, but the chances are that almost all their precious young will be eaten. To avoid this tragedy, some fish have become better parents. A titan triggerfish is behaving strangely. She may be lying on top of her eggs to protect them. Triggerfish lay a jelly-like blob of eggs in depressions in the coral rubble. The dedicated parent defends the eggs from the multicolored thieves. The triggerfish's mate comes to the rescue.
A few eggs might survive, but the longer-term future for coral reefs seems less hopeful. Half the reefs worldwide are dying or have died. Scientists blame us. Pollution and a changing climate with warmer seas. Twilight offers a glimpse into a darker future. Gorgonian fan corals seem like decaying lace. A ghost town, a reminder of what is at stake. On the other side of Saudi Arabia is another vision of the future. In a sea beyond platforms and refineries, there is salvation and new life. In August, on one magical night in the Gulf, the sandstorms and the summer of growth have had an extraordinary effect. Slowly at first, eggs and larvae are released in millions. This wasn't known to happen here on this scale, let alone filmed before. Palola worms release wriggling egg cases that fragment into capsules of eggs. Packages explode with new life. The specially adapted gulf corals, the hardy survivors of a superheated sea, will release eggs too, and egg eaters can't possibly eat them all. Eggs and larvae begin a journey to regenerate the ocean. Tenophores are joined by bigger jellies. This jellyfish is like a mobile reef, a lifeboat full of shrimps and fish and eggs, a Noah's Ark. On the islands where cormorants and terns nested and dust storms blew nutrients into the sea, now baby green turtles start on their journey. They join the eggs and larvae, the gift of the gulf. One lucky hatchling might survive to return here in about 20 years' time. By then, tougher corals from the Gulf may be helping the Red Sea Reef to cope with warmer times. The Gulf, at first, seemed like the ugly duckling of the two seas. Now, it seems the Gulf may perform a final miracle and restock the reef. The two seas are an extraordinary reflection of each other. The parade of riches in the Red Sea relies on almost nothing. The harshness of the Gulf has become its true wealth. Tomorrow night at 8, join Tiger Man as he works to prevent the disappearance of one of the most elegant and extraordinary big cats. Next tonight, though, the Python Hunters.